Hi, this is Denise Matthew back again for another week of the transits. In fact, I'm back this week for the final two weeks of the transits. We're taking us right into 2022 January because I'm going to just do one long video. I will split it up into two. I'm going to release half on the 20th and the other half on the 27th so that it's a little bit more digestible and you have uh, some time in between to absorb exactly what's happening with the weeks ahead. Before I get into the transits, I just wanted to say thank you to every single person who has liked, shared, subscribed, uh, left a comment, whatever you've done, watch my video, anything to uh, support this channel this year. It's been an amazing year. It's it, I've had a lot of growth in the channel and I'm really uh, excited for 2022 to even have more growth, to be able to get the voice of human design out into the world and to show the world how amazing this system is to uh, live your life, to love yourself, to feel better about who you are. And truly really this channel wouldn't be anything that it is right now without everyone's support. I have really enjoyed the work that we've done on the mandala of life that is coming to a close really soon. I mean, we're only going to have a couple more weeks and then we're going to actually close out. And so it's exciting to actually have gone through a whole year. I've had a lot of growth. I've had a lot of things that I've discovered and I hope you guys have too. And I think that it's one of those things that we'll keep on giving because the information is, is something that continues to almost be downloaded where you get these aha moments and you suddenly realize, oh, well, that's what this actually means. That's how it works in my body graph. So with that said, I hope everybody has a wonderful holiday season. If you're celebrating Christmas, Merry Christmas. And if you're celebrating any holiday of any kind, I hope you have a peaceful and, um, and stress-free holiday and and also a, a very wonderful new year and um, I looked at the transits I'm actually doing a uh, solstice ceremony with Raphael I do have a video uh, talking about what exactly that's going to be if anybody's interested in coming and join us please uh, feel free I'd, I'd love to have you there but what I have noticed is that although Pluto is, will be sort of the main player going into 2022 and this whole idea of limitation and, and this concept of um, making do with what we have and finding creative ways to move through and continue to, to grow and to also become sort of stronger with the idea that we are capable of being resilient and understanding that even if we don't have every single tool, if we have a couple of tools that we work with really well, that is enough in many ways. The other perspective is that what, you know, based on history and how things have worked out in the past, and, you know, if you have these times of contraction, which we could also, we could definitely say that the pandemic has been a time of contraction where a lot of people have had to sort of uh, draw in on a lot of things, you, you know, social time or going out to do things and a lot of at home things. So we've had a lot of contraction. I know some people have had some expansion. I would say, I would say that's all related to your transits. And, and basically, you know, your birth, uh, who you are. But for the most part, I think that the world has in many ways contracted. But the key is, is that when we've had these periods of contraction, eventually we have these periods of expansion. And that's what I really feel like we're working with as we go into 2022. The biggest keynote that I've noticed is creativity. I think that we have a lot of of creativity that is going to start to spring up and, and kind of push us into new adventures, new endeavors, brand new mutations, things that we've never seen before, because I think the creative potential is definitely there. So I think that 2021 was kind of a continuation of 2020. And I don't think any of us really wanted to actually have that be as it was, but it definitely was. And I know that a lot of things are happening in the world right now that make it look a little more bleak, but I, but I think going forward, my, my feeling is that 20, 2022 is much brighter, much more open. I'm not saying it's it's going to be just a smooth ride sailing, but you know, I think hard work, resilience and putting one step in front of the other, one foot in front of the other, I think that will get you where you want to go. And the whole concept of working within our limitations, I said, you know, especially with Venus going to be transiting there and, you know, retrograding in the gate 60 a lot, as well as the gate 61 and a few others. Um, you can check out that whole video I did about Venus retrograde, but ultimately it, it, it will meet Pluto and, and it will just sort of show us the path of, you know, they, 
in human design, Pluto is the truth and Venus is the value. So it's the truth of our values. What matters to us? What do we want to look at in the, in the, the next year? What do we want to, um, what do we want to create? What do we want to put our mark on? What trailblazing ideas do we want to push into the new year. And I think there's potential, a lot of potential for that energy to expand, to grow and to become something. Basically what it feels like is that we're being given a seed and we can plant that seed in a place and, you know, decide where we want to put our seed and decide where we want to put the energy into that seed so that we can eventually see it growing. And this is a seeding stage where we're starting to, to, to plant the, the ideas, plant the creative flow, all those types of things. And eventually they begin to grow. As I said, like whatever's happening in the world right now, like I do really believe that we are going to see the end of this based on the trends is I think that March, 2022, early March, first week of March, when Neptune finally moves out of the gate 22, I think that that will sort of be the, the kind of, you could say the bookend of, of what 2020 uh, heralded in, you could say. So I would say that that might be the sort of the end of, of the whole pandemic or you could say the receding of the tides. I think slowly things are going to start to move in a new direction. Will they be like they always were before? Probably not. But that's the whole point is this new year of creativity is going to build new things and build new structures so that, you know, we have this renaissance basically is what they always say. After we have the contraction, we have a renaissance of new energy that floods in and, and enlivens us and allows us to be creative. Because I think that if anything, that is something that the world is, is definitely needing more of more creative ideas, more creative potential. And with some of the transits that the nodes are going to be in the gate eight and 14, that's going to happen in January. Later on in the year, we have the nodes going into the 4323 far reaching ideas. So we're looking at a lot of mutative creative energy. So I just wanted to give you a little heads up. There's always going to be hope. Of course, there's always going to be hope. We're human and we're always going to be looking for that light in the, in the dark cloud. And there is a light in the dark clouds. And I think that the planets are showing us that it, it will be okay and all will be well. I mean, Jupiter is actually going to be moving into uh, Pisces. It's been in signs of Capricorn and Aquarius for the last uh, couple of years and not been in its best form. You could say when it moves into Pisces, that's its home. So it can be its best self and it can kind of, um, give us that boost of expansion and that boost of, of, uh, you could say good luck and those types of things. And it will be going into the gate 55, which is all about the abundance of spirit. And what is spirit? It's spirit is, is allowing our individuality or authentic self to be expressed in the world, to give the world our spirit. And that is what this talks about. So it's, it's an expansion of that. So those are some trends that I'm looking at, and I will give a more in-depth talk about this later on, but Let's get through the end of this year. And in January, I'll go through all the details of what we'll be expecting. We start out the week with the sun in the gate 10 and the earth in the gate 15. Now, both of these energies are the love gates. There are two of the four love gates. The other two are the love of the flesh or the love of the body with this concept that our body is the temple of our soul. And it, it just reminds us to love the physical form that we have, because without this physical form, we couldn't live on planet earth in the Maya. And the other one is the gate 25, which is innocence, but also the love of spirit. And now we add in the gate 10, which is the love of the self, which is, I think in many ways, this is one of the most impactful gates that we can talk about because in a lot of ways, as the social media has become such a, a big thing or a big deal in the world, this whole love of the self has taken on a brand new perspective on who we are, how we see ourselves, how we express ourselves, and are we always allowing ourselves to be our authentic self? Do we mute ourselves? Do we change who we are because we want to fit in? And that's the energy that we're talking about with the gate 10, where it is about being your true self and being exactly who you are and expressing yourself the way you want to. This is mutative energy. This is individual energy. And it's this idea that when we express who we are and when we love who we are, then that gives us the ability to live in this earth in a way that we feel like we're part of the earth. 
we're part of the world, we're part of the Maya, as opposed to standing on the sidelines, just watching the world go by. The other side is if we look at the earth, the gate 15, where we're grounding into the concept of love of humanity, love of extremes, and the whole concept that when you when you take these two gates and you put them together, we see that when we love who we are, we are more tolerant and accepting of the people around us, the world around us. We are tolerant of the extremes of life, and we're tolerant of those things that are not exactly like us because we understand that when we love ourselves, then we love ourselves enough to let everybody else be who they are. And that's the connection with these two gates. So they're very powerful gates that we're working through right now. And we work through every single year at this time. So it can be a time of uh, feeling like you're not good enough, uh, feeling like you're, you, you can't be yourself, or maybe you're going to social events and you just don't feel like you can be yourself. When we add all these ingredients together. One of the, the four love gates, this is considered the lip of the, of the vessel of love that pours love into the world. Because when we feel as though we love ourselves and we, you know, we may not be perfect, but we're okay. And that's, that's just perfectly fine. When we see ourselves as an important part of the world around us and that the world is different because we're actually here, then we can pour our love out into the world by feeling good about who we are, by being empowered by who we are. You know, the shadow side would be the narcissism that a lot of people talk about, just always about how does it, how does the world revolve around me? How does everything look for my perspective? The other perspective is the the duality of, of all energy is this concept of always putting everybody ahead of you instead of allowing yourself to receive, to be loved. Everybody else is more important than you. And that, you know, again, that's sort of not loving yourself again. When we find the balance between the two, that's where we find the sweet spot of, of loving ourselves. This is not easy energy. And I think that if anything, because of the way the internet has grown over the years and those types of things, there is a lot more pressure to be a certain person, to look a certain way, to act a certain way. I mean, if you look at this card, she's looking in a mirror and what does she see? Does she see her beauty or does she only see the superficiality of it? And I think that we, we are combined of a multitude of things. And we, when we just focus on one perspective of who we are, we don't see all the facets of the diamonds that we really are. We are diamonds and we all have a lot of different facets and no two are exactly alike. And when we see that perspective, we can kind of at least step our toe into the concept of, yes, we are lovable and we do deserve love. It always be begins with loving ourselves first. And with the gate 15, we're grounding into the extremes. This could be extreme behavior, people acting in an extreme way, potentially for sure. But it could just be the diversity of, uh, you know, people all around you, how everybody is doing their own thing, the expression of their individuality as well. And from the perspective of how this factors into this time of the year, this is when a lot of people are giving of themselves, giving of, uh, you know, finances, giving of their time, volunteering, doing things to help other people. And that kind of uh, is activated within the earth, within the world at this time. So it, it is an interesting perspective how it all works out to be that that way. Mercury is also in the gate 38. And this is just adding to the concept of what are the worthy fights? What are the things that are, are worthy for us to fight for? So this is a gate that we're going to see a lot of because we're, we do have Venus going to be transiting over this gate. So this is an energy that we're going to have as a theme going forward. And this is talking about what are the worthy fights? What are the things that we want to fight for? What are the things as we go into the new year that are worth our time and effort? What are the things where we just want to let go and not worry about it? I was watching a video the other day and it was about, um, it was tarot cards. And although I, I'm not, I, I can't read tarot cards. It's not my gift. Um, I'm always interested in how people do read the tarot cards, but you know, some people will just tell you about the stories of, of each card. And I, and this one story was that, you know, you put your swords down because it's not worth a fight. And I can't remember what card it was. It might've been seven of swords, but don't quote me on it because I don't know. Like I said, I, I'm not a, an expert in any way, but it was that card where you basically are laying your swords down and you're not you're not engaging in something that is not of value to you. And this is this is what this card is really telling us. And this is what this energy is telling us. What are the things that are worth your time? And what are the things that are not? Venus is working with that energy. Mercury is working with that energy. And later on, the sun will be working with this energy too. So it is a theme that we are playing out at this time of the year. And it is playing out in a way that is a little bit more because of Venus retrograding within this energy. And we also have Venus and that is retrograding 
retrograde now. And I, like I said, I did a whole video on Venus retrograde. So if you want to have a look at that, but we are now in this idea of Venus is in gate 60 and it will eventually um, meet Pluto in the gate 60 in sort of end of January and really kind of hammer in this idea of uh, limitation is the first step to transcendence in this idea of when we transcend the limitations that are all around us, we in some way raise our consciousness, but not only that, we are happy as an individual being because we can see that there is more that we can do with what we have. I look at the gate 60 in the perspective of my children, for instance, and that if they want to do something, they want to build a project or even when they were smaller, if they wanted to, uh, you know, make a project for school or something, you would go to the dollar store and you'd buy all the little glitter, or the things that they needed to make the project. It was very easy and affordable to go to the dollar store, buy these things, and you don't have all the ingredients or the tools that you need or all the, the, the things that you needed to make these projects. But when I was growing up, there was no dollar stores. There was no ability to just kind of get in the car and drive away and drive somewhere and get all the things you needed. So you had to look around the house. You had to say, okay, what is here that I can use in this moment? And that's kind of how I was brought up. So I learned how to not have a lot, but make what I could with what I had in that moment. And that is it is, a, it is a skill and it is, but it, it's a skill, but it's also something that it was by necessity that this was a skill that I learned. This is what we're looking at potentially is a skill that we're learning by necessity. It's going back to the old ways of doing things, but finding a new way to do it. So, you know, people preserving or gardening or something like that. And how are they doing it in a new way in this current world that we're living in? How can we incorporate those old ways of, of sort of growing our own food? Can we have micro gardens? Can we do those types of things that in some way we're feeling like we have some control in our own life? We are limited and yet we're transcending the limitation by being in control of what we can actually grow or, or those types of things. Mars is moving into the gate nine on the December 21st. And that's going to really kind of kick up this energy to um, sort of jump the, the fence, you could say, on a lot of things and not really want to work with the details. Mars is fast and let's get the job done and let's push ahead. So this is just being frustrated with this idea of trying to figure out what you want to concentrate, how, how, what is the pattern that we want to go with in the future? So there's this frustration with the details, frustration with you know, wanting to just not have to gather the details, not to have to worry about all those things. Let's just go ahead and get what we want to get done. That's where it's it's just a reminder to slow down. But what's nice is that on December 25th, we are going to have the sun and the earth move again. When that does happen, we will have the earth going into the gate 52. And when that happens, then we'll have the full channel of the 952, which can bring a more of a flow of the energy so that there is more patience potentially to have this energy, the stillness to sit with the details, and also the ability to collect the details to actually have this idea of where are we going into the future? What is the pattern that we're actually going to move toward? And then Mars will actually move into the gate five later on. So with the information that we've sort of come together, the format energy, what we're deciding to concentrate on, what patterns we want to put into the future, what kind of goals do we want to set for ourselves? Where, what path do we want to walk? Because when we have this ability to sit in stillness, we can move into the future, move to the things that we want to have a routine in our life. And, and so I think that's really nice about this energy, how it's working out that Mars is going to be in the gate nine. I would say in many ways, this will settle down the energy because with that full channel, it will make the difference between between Mars just saying, let's jump ahead, let's just get the things done and, and not worry about how it's going to, if we have all the information uh, with the earth in the gate 52, that will make a huge difference in moving into this energy in a way that we're feeling that we can actually sit with the information long enough to, to get the information that we need so that we can put something together to build a collage. This is also this idea that reminds us that every, every step that we're taking is getting us closer to where we want to go in life. The, it, this is the whole concept of the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. So that's what we can have this ability to start to see that we are moving in the direction that we want to move. 
So on December 23rd, Mercury moves into the gate 54. This is tribal energy. And it is talking about this idea of just continuing to move forward, to be noticed by people that are important so that you can get ahead. All tribal energy is going to be related to support. And this is about getting support for your talent, getting the right people to see you to so that you can move on to the next step. This could be ha- seeing talent for communication skills or communicating your talent or allowing people to hear your talent. So this is just really talking about climbing the ladder of life and transforming and moving up the uh, proverbial ladder of life. And and that's what Mercury will be, you know, communicating. We could hear that people are moving up in, in their jobs or they're wanting to move up in their jobs. That's their desire. Maybe that's your desire that you want to move forward and you're talking about it and how you want to bring that into focus and how you want to make that happen. When Mercury gets to the 54 line four, that's the mystical line of this ambition to be awake. So that mystical line is being connected with by Mercury as well as Venus. Because of the Venus retrograde, Venus is connecting with that energy, giving more focus to this energy where Venus is going to be transiting. So it's more more of this ambitious drive to move forward. And it makes a lot of sense because like I said, with the creativity and this need to to kind of go in new directions in 2022, ambition will be part of it. This is projected energy. So when we want to be seen for a talent, usually it's being recognized for a talent by somebody else without sort of telling everybody how talented we are. And that's kind of how this works best. You're recognized for what you can do. And when you are, then that is when sort of magic happens and you can sort of move to the next rung of the ladder. And we also have Jupiter right now in the 30 line five. Now this is moving into irony. My feeling of uh, when when Jupiter moved into the gate 30 line four, the burnout, I, I really felt like that was going to be a time where we were going to really feel that energy of, of just this exhaustion or this speeding up of so much and not being able to keep up with, with everything. Maybe not having the energy, just not having those types of things that we, we could actually grasp onto that ability to keep going. And uh, some people felt very overwhelmed by it. Some people felt um, that they just didn't have the energy. And some people just felt completely like run down and actually, you know, got physically uh, unwell. So it, it, it definitely was uh, an energy that was palpable in a lot of ways. I think a lot of us are happy to see that it has moved on. Um, So now we're moving into irony. Irony is going to be with us until the 24th of December. So this irony is this concept that understanding that change is inevitable, that eventually there are, there are times when we have to move to something else. And, and it's knowing when enough is enough and knowing when we have hit that point of, we can't do this anymore. We have to move on to something else. And that's what this energy is reminding us of. What have we, what have you hit the end game of what you no longer want in your life? Is it your work? Is it your relationship? Or is it uh, you know, something related to how you make your money? Is it your, your, uh, what you do every day? Is it your health routine? There's a multitude of ways of how this could show up. It's also this idea of having the gratitude for where you are in this moment. And the whole concept of two steps forward and one step back is still one step forward. That is part of this energy and understanding that even if it looks as if you've tumbled down the hill again, you're more uh, ahead than you think you are. And that's another perspective. But the main key is is to say what is done in your life, what are we finished with, and what can we let go of to open the door to new uh, new things coming into our life. It will be abundantly clear to you about what exactly you're done with. And that's, that's the energy we'll be working with until the 24th of December. The 25th of December, we're moving on to enforcement. And when we get to enforcement, this is what we call sort of the sixth line. It's the discipline to maintain right action. What that means is it is this kind of, you get to the sixth line. It is, if you look at it, when everybody is not doing the right thing, can you hold on to the right way of doing things? This is where we are saying, okay, how can I eliminate the things that are are not in my best interest from my perspective? How can I be in a, in a place of peace despite what the surroundings are around me, despite what the negative behavior around me. So this is kind of being able to continue to move forward in the direction that you want, be a role model for who you are as an individual to be the best version of you, despite 
the playing field that you're on, despite what's going on all around you, to still try and bring your best game to the to the collective, even though, you know, there might be a lot of things going on around you that can kind of drag you into it. But instead of being dragged into it, you maintain your integrity, you maintain your resilience and your ability to be who you are, be the highest version of yourself, despite what's going on. So that's kind of where we're going with the sixth line when we get to enforcement. That will be the final energy of the fates. And we will move on the 30th into the gate 55, which is, like I said, the abundance of spirit that I talked about in the beginning. That on December 25th, we have the sun moving into the gate 58 and and the earth moving into the gate 52, like I talked about with the gate 58, this is bringing joy. And this is bringing this uh, kind of zest for life. The key words with the, the gate 58 is stimulation is the key to joy, which means that being stimulated, being uh, looking at the possibilities of the future, deciding about, I think in a lot of ways, the gate 58, it is logical energy, but I think in a lot of ways that we can almost say that it, it acts kind of a little bit like abstract energy because it is the stimulation. Stimulation is something that we see more with abstract energy, like the gate 11, the 1156, that channel. So this is finding the beauty within the life that we have. So finding the gratitude for what we have, what do we have within the, this life right now? What do we have in, within this moment that we can have gratitude for? Everybody will have a different thing to have gratitude for. And especially like if you do celebrate Christmas, this is something that happens every Christmas day that, you know, this is the energy that is actually there. This idea of, of wanting to be festive, wanting to have this zest for life or wanting to find the good in, in the world all around you. And this is also looking at where do you want to improve your life in the future? The other perspective is, is that over going overboard, having too much of a good thing, having too much enjoyment, not wanting for the party to stop, wanting to continue to go to the next party and not really have an end game of, you know, where, where there's a stopping point. So this is just talking about having balance within the energy to have a good time, to have a good party or whatever you want to do to find the joy in life, but also to understand that eventually the party has to be over because you have to move on to something else. And, and, you know, sometimes like the, the shadow side of this would be just somebody who just wants to, uh, they go out for an evening and they want to go to the after hours club and they just want to go to the, and and at 5.00 AM, they're still wanting to say, no, I don't want to go home. I just want to continue to party. I just want to continue to have a good time to enjoy in the festivities to the expense of your body, sometimes being exhausted. And maybe you need to go home because you're, you're too tired, but you don't want to, because you want to continue to have this pattern of having a lot of fun. So balance in all things. And I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Take care and I'll see you soon.